Hi guys, can you guys hear me? Uh, probably you guys can un text. Yeah, sure. You guys can hear me, huh? Yeah. Okay, probably others. Uh, how are you guys? Um, I believe today is a public holiday. Although in Xiamen University, um, during online class, we don't have public holiday because the lecturer will still upload <laughs> upload uh, lecture recordings to us. <laughs> Yeah, but wish you guys have a good day and um, it's the second day of High Rise IDV3 and thanks you guys for joining us today. Although it's a public holiday, but we are here to um, share some new stuff and any any some tech stuff that we find it quite fascinating and um, to share with you guys. Can we go um, welcome you guys to XShare session 3 today. Um, can we do a next slide? Yeah, so basically today, right, uh, we will have two topics. Uh, one is about cryptocurrency. Uh, I'll be talking what is cryptocurrency and my friend, the other will be talking about how she actually made a Instagram filter. So um, for some context for you guys, um, I want to tell you guys um, what is actually um, XShare. Basically, XShare is like a platform for students, anyone who actually interested in uh, interested in like sharing anything, some uh, tech stuff they recently learned or recently found out to the peoples to the community here um, sharing they have a lot of benefits basically sharing you can learn it more deeply and also you can let the others actually get to know some interesting tech stuff too you are learning and growing together and your your content your talks and you, your content or talks may actually um, uh, bring impact to the others and empower others so this is quite a fascinating thing although it's not a very usual thing in university to actually have like a peer-to-peer -peer sharing session but I feel like this is the uh, one most important thing. Uh, you need to like um, share your knowledge, talk with each other, uh, and yeah, peer-to-peer -peer learning is a is a better and also um, a more healthy way of learning. So I I see a lot of you guys joining here today. So probably you guys can um say hi at a at a chat session. Yeah, you guys can say hi and who you are. Yeah, yeah. Today's session is more like um peer-to-peer. Uh, talking it's not not like a lecture session <laughs> yeah so you guys can just like blast out the comments anything you think about yeah like it's basically like a, a youtube comment session like you want to talk about anything also can yeah live chat session something like that yeah hi hi yeah hello peoples hello hi hi function hi lija hi insani hello hello guys yeah so today we have about 18 is quite okay Hi, hi. So, hello, Ricky. So, I'll share my screen, yeah, with for a while. At the same time, you guys can introduce yourself a little bit. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, can you guys see my screen? Can, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, first, I'm going to talk about um, what is cryptocurrency. Yeah, I feel like um, this is a topic that is quite fascinating for me, like starting of starting of this year, 2021, I get to know about cryptocurrencies, blockchain stuff, and it is very fascinating. And I really wish to like share with you guys about what I know about that. Um, a few contexts, right? Uh, it might not 100% true. Um, it, it have some, some of my opinions, but I try to make it as simple and as high level and as simple for you guys to actually understand what is cryptocurrency. Because it is how to say it's a quite um, abstract thing. Yeah, it, because it's not like normal money you can really see it. It's like quite an abstract thing for, for people. So uh, today, um, what I do is that I want to share what I know about cryptocurrency for you guys to know a little bit more about what is cryptocurrency. Lah. Okay, so how about let's start. Um, so hi guys, I'm Kim Cheng Yong. I'm a year three software engineering student. Um, I'm the founder and lead of XMUM Tech Club and DSC XMUM. So XMUM Tech Club is XTech, which are, we are here, and also um, Developer Student Club, Xiaomi University of Malaysia, which is a um, um, Google community in Xiaomi University of Malaysia, Google Technology Community in Xiaomi University of Malaysia. And what I do is I usually do web, uh, mobile apps, and also data science stuff. Um, but recently, I get really into, quite into um, cryptocurrency. It's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, and mm, that's basically who I am. Yeah. So, um, without further ado, um, you guys can actually leave any comments and any questions, right, at the chat session. If I can, I see it, then I'll directly answer it, lah. Okay, uh, throughout my throughout my sharing session. 
Okay, so I believe you guys probably see all these things before, lah. Okay, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Dogecoin. Okay, so you can see like a lot of people say Dogecoin, a uh, Doge fly to the moon. <laughs> Um, and also like Elon Musk keep on joking and making memes with uh, regarding cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and Dogecoin stuff. Do you guys um get to see this kind of stuff in the internet? Like um, cryptocurrency memes, you guys can comment there. Do you guys get to see like cryptocurrency memes stuff in the internet, especially in the tech community and the, and the finance community, there are a lot of <laughs> cryptocurrency stuff that blew up. And especially, uh, actually uh, Bitcoin actually blew up this year especially it brought it grows a lot about few hundreds percent and yeah it's currently like uh, one bitcoin is like a 2000k one one bitcoin is like 2000k measuring it okay so um first is do you guys heard of bitcoin you guys can comment at the live chat session you guys heard of bitcoin yeah anyone here this guy got heard of bitcoin Yes, Bitcoin. Yes, anyone here heard of Bitcoin? Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, if you got, if you heard of Bitcoin, yeah, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you heard of Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is the cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency is basically cryptography plus currency is two words together. It's a basically a currency lah, but it's a crypto way, and um. Because one of the aim for me is to talk about what is uh, cryptocurrency. So I would say Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, but cryptocurrency is not just Bitcoin. There are a lot of cryptocurrencies such as uh, Bitcoin, Binance Coin, Litecoin, XRP, Dogecoin, Ethereum, Chainlink, and more. You can see like there are like four to five case um, cryptocurrencies in the world now. Four to five thousand cryptocurrency in the world now. Um, but you know that? Do you know like? Where does these coins, these crypto, the cryptocurrency ideas came from? Where does it come from? Um, basically, it came from this person called Satoshi Nakamoto. He actually published a paper in 2018 talking about Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And something funny about is like Satoshi Nakamoto is actually um, no one actually know who is this. He's like um, a secret person. No one actually know who it is. And he created um, and he created a, a, a currency that is. It's freaking worth like a few trillions um, ringgit, lah, I would say. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Satoshi Makamoto is, you just, no one actually know who it is. He just publishes this paper in in the, in the, for, in the like, uh, I think in, in the paper world, lah, there's a website. He, he posted this paper and this paper blew up. And since then, a lot of people can, uh, and also he put Bitcoin as an open source. A lot of people actually fork it and start to be creating their own um, uh, cryptocurrency, such as uh, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and more. Um, yeah, so so it did come from this person at 2008. Um, then then we will start to wonder. So um, uh, I haven't talked about why is cryptocurrency now. Um, in definition, cryptocurrency is a type of currency that is decentralized and digital. Um, first, I'm going to talk about digital. I think a lot of people actually know what digital currency is because like, do you guys use Touch and Go, e wallet, or Boost or Grab Grab uh, Grab Grab Pay? Anyone use it? Uh, you probably can say uh, which e-wallet you use before. Yeah, so like uh, this e-wallet, I also digital e-wallet or your Maybank to you. Maybank to you is also digital wallet. All the money are virtually are numbers. They are just numbers uh, in the internet. They are just a bunch of numbers and codes in the internet. Uh, they, are no, they are no physical coin that you can touch them. Lah. They are no physical coin that you can touch them. We call it digital. They are, you just can see the numbers. Okay, you see a numbers is yours, but they are just numbers. Okay, <laughs> yeah, they, they are not like cash. You can't actually touch it. Uh, instead, right? Um, how you actually own and hold these cryptocurrencies, you need to uh, need to have like a crypto wallet, like digital wallet. And then what you can do with the, the cryptocurrency is that you can buy and sell like normal currency. Yeah, and you can buy and sell through like brokers or you can store it. Uh, and there are two ways to actually store cryptocurrency. Like one is that like, you store in online through brokers like, such as like Binance, Pluno and all kinds of stuff. Um, or you can store it offline like your hardware, your, your hard hardware, your PC. Yeah. So um, I think digital is quite easy to understand. It's already a common thing among us, digital currency, I would say. But now we go to the main point, um, decentralized. This is the core, the core thinking of cryptocurrency and how a cryptocurrency is actually changing the world, especially in the financial industry. Lah, okay. So um, in, in previously, like, let, let, me, uh, let me use this pen tool. Yeah, in previously, this is decentralized. Lah. 
this decentralized. Okay, it's, why is centralized? I'll explain why it's centralized. Centralized is, uh, for example, A want to talk to B, lah, okay? What you need to put, you need to pass through intermediaries. Or, okay, A want to talk to B. A need to talk to B, you need to pass through these intermediaries. Every person, every everything you need to go through, need to go through these intermediaries or mid, uh, middleman. Lah. Okay, this is called centralized. But decentralized is basically peer-to-peer -peer, like Bitcoin. Um, you can just A, just talk to B, talk to B directly. You don't need to pass through anybody. So this is the core thinking of, uh, core thinking of, uh, 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 decentralized. So it's a decentralized currency, la, But we'll talk about what is why, what is decentralized currency in future. But you need to in later. But you need to know what is decentralized here. So decentralized just peer to peer. You don't need to pass through middlemen. But um, do you curious that um, why decentralized? Why you want to make it decentralized? We don't we don't want to make it centralized for finance for currency. Okay, let me tell you. Uh, but to you to understand why we we. we uh, why decentralized? You need to understand um, centralized financial system first. So our current financial, our current current financial system is actually centralized financial system. Um, for example, right, one person from A, I, I want to send B a thousand dollars, a thousand ringgit lah. Okay. Um, so what the bank need to, uh, I want A want to send B a thousand ringgit. So you need to pass through this middleman, centralized ah, this centralized. So you need to pass through this middleman, which is bank, bank or financial institution, usually bank lah. Okay. I will say, so I want to bang in this. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to bang in this person. Uh, B a thousand ringgit. So what, uh, what this third party or this uh, intermediate man do is, uh, he acts as like um, a third party or intermediaries that will check lah, check for every transaction. You need to pass through him. What he will check whether you have the balance of what, one thousand ringgit. You need to check the record. He have a database to actually check the records ah. Okay, if he check, you only have five ring, five hundred ringgit. Okay, rejected. You don't have enough balance. Yeah, but if you have more than one thousand ringgit, he will accept this transfer. So what he will do after you accept, he will minus your balance one thousand ringgit and he add one thousand ringgit for B. So you basically just um, you need every transaction need to pass through the, this particular intermediaries, which usually is bank lah. Okay, yeah. So this is current financial system is even the same as investing. For example, you do you know you guys know FD uh, fixed deposit. It's basically like investing to the bank, like you say, um, I give you five thousand dollars for one year. You help me to invest. I'll, I'll get the annual interest rate of two percent. Then they will take your money to do something. Then they give you back two percent, lah. Okay, yeah. So basically, everything you need to pass through bank, especially during transaction. So as we know, this centralized because everything, every transaction you need to pass through banks. No matter to where, no matter you pass, you bank into UK, bank into US, ah. If you bank into UK, bank into US from Malaysia, more intermediaries coming on. <laughs> okay, so um. This is centralized finance. Um, but do you curious that um, how how does it? Um, but there are a lot of problems with central finance. I would say um, there are some problems here. So first, what we do is we are putting trust on this central intermediate central entities and intermediaries to perform financial transaction or investments. We're putting trust on them lah. Okay, because we we give one thousand ringgit right. Uh, for example, uh, A gives to be 1,000 ringgit. You need to trust this system that he will check that A have actually 1,000 ringgit to bank in. And he actually bank in the 1,000 ringgit to B. So you're putting trust on them. Lah. They are act like, like a third party, third party trust, a uh, third party, and so the trust party lah, to actually perform all the financial, financial uh, transaction. And so investment is the same. Uh, well, I'll say financial, uh, a fixed deposit. You give, put in money deposit there. They will take your money to do investments and they give you interest rate yearly. Yeah, so you'll be putting trust on them. Lah. But um, there are some problems with, with this thing. Um, what if the bank fails? For example, right, in year 2018, there's a world uh, financial crisis, right? So for example, this Lehman Brothers, you guys, um, probably you guys had heard of Lehman Brothers. It's a very big financial, um, it's a very big financial institution at the time. They do investment stuff. So a lot of people just invest in them and they take the money to do some investment stuff. Lah. Yeah. But there are some problems. First, what if the bank fails? Because I take your money to make investment to bring you interest rate. What if the bank bankrupts? Like in here, the Lehman Brothers, they actually bankrupt. Then he bankrupt, causing he can't give back the, the people the invested money. Then actually a lot of people get bankrupts and um, it actually causes the financial crisis at the time. He's the root cause of financial crisis of 2008. And will the bank take advantage of you? They will charge like very high transaction fee. For example, from Malaysia, when a bank into UK, this bank very high transfer fee and so they earn you through interest rate and also not interest rate uh through the currency rate okay usually like for example five ah it's always five they charge you 5.2 yeah 
which is something like this. And what will they do with your money? For example, um, in Lehman Brothers example, you give them $10,000, they will have you invest and they will say they will give you a yearly interest of 2%. Do you know what they take your money to do? No, you don't know what they do with it. And so if you perform transaction, like normal transaction, do you know how they actually check those those stuff? You, you probably you don't know, and what what is done inside there you don't know. Whether it's safe, whether it's leaked, you don't know. They they are not transparent at all. Um, and also basically what I'll say is if you are using centralized finance, you are basically um we are actually sitting on the same bridge lah. Once the bridge collapse, all of us will collapse as well. So that's why um this is the same thing said two thousand eight, um when financial crisis happened. Therefore, like when the financial crisis happened, then we come up with Bitcoin, then people see the value of Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction of cash, like, as a greater currency. Um, there are also other problems like, such as high intermediary costs, low transaction and financial inequalities. I believe you you guys actually get to know this if you if you do financial transactions. Um, if you go do do um financial transactions, uh, if you give someone to UK, you need to you will have a lot of charges there. Lah. And so it's very slow. Available Malaysia to UK it probably take two to three working days sometimes. And so financial inequalities. Those people, right, uh, on the Wall, uh, Wall, uh, Wall Street, uh, in, in the Wall Street, right, they actually, they are the financial, is it a lot of financial institutions there. So the people there actually get very rich huh, because every money actually need to go through them. Right? Every, everything needs to go through them. They actually can earn a lot through there. So it's really causing a lot of inequalities between them and us. And so causing like, um, the difference between earning a lot and earning uh, people that earn a lot and uh, people that earn little. So, yeah. So therefore, the the well, the idea of decentralized finance or decentralized currency actually um, came out and it, it blew out the world. It's a very different thing. We don't need intermediaries. The money are controlled by the people, but not by third party, uh, third party intermediaries. So what we do is what we do here is like we remove the banks out. We don't need the bank to handle the money for us um, and our transaction because they are uh, basically not that trustable, I would say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, decentralization is like probably the primary thing of cryptocurrency. Um, previously, we all trust on banks to uh, trust the central banks to, to, to maintain our currency and uh, perform transaction. But now we don't need them. We do it ourselves. Um, but are you curious? Um, how does it? operate now since we don't have intermediaries. Are you guys curious? Probably you can uh, tell, tell, tell us in the chat session here. Are you guys curious like how does it work? Because we don't have intermediaries, you know, no one actually record it down. Nobody, nobody like can verify that you have five ringgit to transfer. Only you, you, you have five, you have, you have 10,000, you have 1,000 ringgit in your bank to actually transfer 1,000 ringgit. Because now they are all regular with people. They are not the party. Are you guys curious about it? If not curious, I won't continue. Eh? You guys need to say you're curious. <laughs> okay, no comment. Eh? <laughs> yeah, if you guys are curious, yeah. So uh, now I'm going to continue to talk about um, how how we actually operate. It's actually built on blockchain technology. Yeah, blockchain technology um, is very interesting, which I'll, I'll be explaining it later. But I'll explain it in a more brief way, although the slide is a little bit technical sometimes. But I'll try to book it in a more brief way and using analogies, lah. Okay, um, it's built using blockchain technology. Blockchain technology is basically um, is is helping us to achieve this decentralized stuff, lah. So uh, we'll be using Bitcoin as example, as Bitcoin is one of the most popular cryptocurrency in the world, and most of you here know about what is Bitcoin. And I'll try to explain like a Q and A way for Q and A myself, like question and answer with the decentralized finance, uh, decentralized stuff. So um. Okay, first thing, for example, A want to give uh, A, uh, for example, A, uh, for example, I want to bank into Wenjie, my friend here, a thousand, uh, uh, one Bitcoin. Um, how do we record the transaction, right? Because previously, right, we have bank to actually record transaction to check whether I have one, uh, to check, uh, to, to, to actually uh, perform the transaction and uh, record the transaction down. But now, there are no third parties. I just give one, give one jet, but it's like we are in the same room. In the same room, there are 10% here, I just give one jet. 10, 10 ringgit. How can we actually record the transaction? So um, yeah, the problem we don't have the third party intermediaries that we can trust on to perform this. Um, so um, uh, with the blockchain technology, um, every transaction is actually announced to everybody. So it's basically how to say it's broadcast to everyone. For example, 10 percent in this room. Okay, 10 percent in this room. I want to give one jet, uh, one bitcoin. What I what I will do is, hi guys, one uh, hi guys, I'll give one jet, one bitcoin, yeah. So everyone actually get to know that 
then they, then I will say, I will say about uh, provide a message. I give one jet uh, one Bitcoin, and I give my digital signature. Digital signature is actually a bunch of numbers lah, but I will say probably I sign it. Uh, I give one jet one ringgit uh, I sign it, and I give my public key. Public key is basically identifier for me. I will say my name is Kim Sheng Yong. Yeah. But others, then then you guys say okay okay got it got it. Then we actually record it down in your own ledger, in your own ledger. So it's basically like I tell, I announce everyone, guys, I give one one Bitcoin, and everyone record it down. They say, okay, no problem. Then this, um, this, uh, if more than fifty percent acceptance, then this transaction is approved. These guys get it? Probably they just announcing to everyone. Uh, basically, the one room they announce it to everyone. Um, but how to? Um, but now, now another another problem. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But big one Bitcoin is 20, 200k Malaysia ringgit. I can't give you <laughs> uh, So um, how to ensure like now the now another problem because I just say that I give one J one Bitcoin. How can I ensure that me the sender have a, have actually one Bitcoin? Mm, because there are no third parties to check your balance, right? So with the blockchain technology is very interesting. Um, because in blockchain technology, block. It's actually we call it like a uh, treasure history records. Treasure history records are uh, basically a block. So um, for example, I, I send one J1 and get it's like a receipt. Receipt. So what, what we do is uh, in blockchain is they have a lot of these receipts, all previous records, all previous transaction history. They chain all these receipts together and we call it blockchain. And one receipt is called block. And we have all a, a lot of receipts, then we chain it together because they are in timestamp sequence. Then we call it blockchain, they chain it together. And the transactions are recorded. All these receipts are re receipts are collected from the launching day of the particular cryptocurrency. So from the first day of cryptocurrency 2009, uh, Bitcoin chain launches. They they already started this um, blockchain. Uh, they have the first first uh, block, which is the first receipt. Then they change 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 until now. So every transaction is actually recorded. And also um, this this trans this or uh, uh, this transaction is recorded in the blockchain, right? And this blockchain is distributed for everyone. So I actually got this blockchain and a bunch of this receipt. Basically, it's just like a page, lah. Okay, block is like a page. Blockchain is a, uh, so blockchain is a ledger for yeah. Blockchain is basically a ledger for everyone. It's a it's an official ledger for everyone. Basically, it's like um a block is like a book. Blockchain is uh block is like a page. Then blockchain is like a whole book. So you link to everyone. So everyone is tightly linked. Every is tightly linked. Link. So um when when uh so when a new transaction added, then we actually we add a new block inside this blockchain, then we can actually track every the, all the transaction history. I can check Kim Sheng Yong whether you have one Bitcoin. Uh, they have an algorithm to actually check it. Okay, you have one Bitcoin or not? Yes, you have one Bitcoin. Then we approve. If you check, eh, I think you don't have one Bitcoin. Then you will, you will be rejected. So everyone have the same ledger. Then you can check whether Kim Sheng Yong have one Bitcoin. If more than fifty percent say that, oh, he don't have one Bitcoin, reject. Then this transaction is failed. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. This, this one of the interesting thing. You don't need to check yourself. It's actually basically a system, lah. Basically, basically like a system. Everyone is one node, but the system because you, your, your account and your, uh, you are check it yourself. It's not you need to read it yourself, lah. But you as a person, they have some codes that run on your computer. They actually check it itself. So basically, he depends on the people to to check the 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 ledger whether Kim Sheng have one Bitcoin. So uh, everyone has the same blockchain refer to whether the sender has the sufficient balance to transfer the crypto. So blockchain is like an official ledger and it is distributed to everyone. So everyone has the same ledger to check whether I have one Bitcoin. If you guys have any question, you can put it at a at the comment section. Yeah. Okay, then then another problem comes comes again. So uh, who will record in uh in the block for each transaction? Um, um for example, right, um because um, for example, 10 of us here. I'll say, I give one jet, one Bitcoin. Everyone say, okay, approve. But who will record it? Who will record it? Because we don't have a third party, tr third trusted party, right? Then we, we, we don't have, we can't, we can't say, uh, I mean, you just record it. Lah. Because, because we don't know that whether he trusted or not. Yeah. So the very smart thing about blockchain is um, they're actually using something called proof of work, um, which is quite interesting. And what they do is uh, they only select one person to actually uh, rec um, uh, to record a transaction. Lah. What they, they actually record a transaction, one person to record a transaction. But how they select the one person is through proof of work. Uh, usually this proof of work thing, 
we call it mining. They also heard of mining, basically just mining Bitcoin, mining Bitcoin. But what they do is they do it, uh, proof of work, basically. So uh, for example, right, um, when we have a new transaction come, right, we have new transaction. Um, I, I, I say I bang into one year, one Bitcoin. Then basically a new puzzle is published. A new puzzle is published. Then a new puzzle is published for the people. Then um, the people will the people will just uh, the people in the in the in the whole in the, in the network can just um, basically solve the puzzle. You need to solve the puzzle. The puzzle is usually very hard. Lah. Then you need to solve the puzzle using computer. Like need to like they call it mining, right? Mining they use computer to calculate the values. You need to calculate the nouns to intended match the hash value. Basically, it's solving the puzzle. Then uh, once you solve the puzzle, then we will let others to check for you because um, they're actually using some hash um, hash function stuff that uh, that um, because hash function stuff right basically is something like this. Uh, you need you can check it very easily, but you need to get the value is very hard. It's a one way one way function stuff uh, basically. Yeah, so uh, you need to let others to check uh, whether the the sort of the, the puzzle you solve is correct. Uh, once more than fifty percent say, oh, the one you did is correct, then okay, they will add this block. Add this block to the blockchain. So basically, what you do is uh, because they uh, when when new transaction they come to they, they when when a new transaction is uh, is performed, they have a new block. But need to come, need to uh, need to do the proof of work on this block, like to basically solve this puzzle. Then I will say, okay, you do it right. So we add so you can add this block to the blockchain. You have the right to add this to the blockchain. So um, the first guy that did this, the first guy that uh, actually solved the puzzle. We actually get awarded a uh, Bitcoin lah, by the Bitcoin protocol. So because you do some work, right? because you, you do some work to actually prove that this big, uh, this uh, uh, to, to, to prove the, to prove that this uh, this block is, is legit and to prove that you, you actually help to actually make sure that this transaction is legit. So they give you some reward, lah. for example, 12.5 Bitcoin or something. People is 12.5. Now I think it's lesser lah, because as the time goes, the awarded value, uh, awarded Bitcoin is lesser and lesser. So uh, I will say miner is like worker, they get salary. So when you perform a trans, and the sender are like customer. So sender and the, the sender and receiver, they are like customer, they perform a transaction. But who will, who will actually um, help you to uh, add, this, add this into the receipt, in, in, into the, like, the total ledger is the miner. The miner need to prove that your work is tr using some, solving the puzzle to ensure that this transaction is true. Then they will add it to the ledger, yeah. So and also like extra thing lah. So what if like two person right complete, uh, a complete uh, proof of work and pack a new block at the same time because they, they might be race condition stuff. Right? For example, two person perform the uh, proof of work and uh, they they solve the puzzle at the same time. Then suddenly right the 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 the, the blockchain become like two person at the same time. So what they will choose is because um after this two two person actually um pack out a new block right. Then other person also create also solving the puzzle, right? Then they will connect behind them. Yeah. For example, like after two minutes, then they will choose the one longer. They choose the 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 the, the route which create longer. Then they will actually um they will actually choose their route to continue. And the other route they will actually um rejected lah. They rejected the transaction and the block. Yeah. I think it's a bit confusing here. So basically, what they do is they they race they race to solve the puzzle. The first one to solve the puzzle. Uh, the the one saw the puzzle actually help to verify this transaction is legit. Then they add it to the block. They add the block to the blockchain. Then they are rewarded Bitcoin. This is basically how it how it does lah. Yeah, because we don't have a third party to do this one. Yeah, so we need to reward them some stuff. So uh, and next like um um another another problem comes through is like how do we ensure that uh, the records are the, the records in ledger are legit? Um yeah, you need to ensure all the records are legit, right? So what what in the in in cryptocurrency right um all the uh all the bit uh in cryptocurrency each block of the blockchain right, are tightly correlated uh. basically they are like a book right page one page two page three once you tear down page two or you change some content in page two page three need to make changes page four need to make changes page five need to make changes and if you make one changes you need to perform a lot of you need to perform like um solving the puzzles again every page you need to solve the puzzle which take a lot of time so therefore like you can't actually falsify and change simply change data in in the blockchain lah. yeah and also there are digital signatures in each transaction that could not be falsified digital signatures are basically signatures by the person who performed the transaction 
And also because all transactions are recorded in the blockchain, you cannot simply just add fake records in. Because if you want to add one fake records in, right, the whole page content will be changes. And because we know that each page are correlated, so page three changes, page four, you know, page four will affect it. Then you will, you will say, hey, there's some problem with it. So I, will, I won't let this go through. If you want to let this go through, you need to, you need to make changes in page four. Page four affect page five, page six, page seven, page eight. For example, there are 10,000 pages, you need to perform 10,000 page changes. Yeah. How about when someone use money to buy cryptocurrency, is it recorded in the blockchain as well? I don't know. Yeah, 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 probably I'll, because we, we do talk about this in later. Yeah, I will actually get to know that. So um, next I'll talk about how digital signature can prove that Russia is legit. Oh, I think, yeah. So uh, so how uh, digital signature actually can prove that the transaction is legit? I think I missed up the, the, the slides for this one. So digital signature is basically like um, I sign it. I'm the one who performed this transaction. They actually sign it with my uh, with my with my own reputation uh, because there are there are a lot of maths and stuff behind them. Basically, um, um, I have my secret password. My secret password we usually is called private key. Private key, if my secret password can can uh, if my uh, with my secret password I can actually um, create this digital signature. Only with only with uh, only with my uh, private key I can create this digital signature. So others people who don't have this private key, right? They can't create this digital signature. So others people will say, oh, once it's this uh, digital signature, if you can prove that this is yours, you can calculate that this is yours, you can show that this is yours, then it is yours. Other people who don't have the private key cannot cannot prove that it's theirs because they don't have the private key. Basically, just just like a account password, lah. Okay. Okay. Um, that's basically how Bitcoin works. Uh, I hope I didn't confuse you guys. You guys can comment how you feel about that. But yeah, another question because um, uh, Golam actually asked how do people use money to buy cryptocurrency. Okay, so we get to the point here. How, where can you get cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies? You can buy with cash or you can mine to actually get cryptocurrency. So if you need to buy with cash, right? you can go to these brokers, Coinbase, Binance, Crypto.com or Luno and there are more and more uh, brokers. We are pursuing these brokers, they are like stock brokers. Lah. They just like, um, you just go there. I want to buy one one Bitcoin. Then the other the, the people in the in this platform who have one Bitcoin say, I want to sell one Bitcoin with this price. Then you can negotiate for the price. Then yeah, just get one Bitcoin. Basically, you it won't be ah uh, yeah, it will be recorded at the blockchain as well. Yeah, it will be recorded at the blockchain as well. So for example, I I basically just transferring lah. I just, I transfer to example Golem. You want to buy one Bitcoin? I want to sell one Bitcoin. So I transfer one Bitcoin to you. You pay me cash. Pay me cash, I travel one Bitcoin to you. So the this Bitcoin will be recorded in the blockchain in, in a single block uh, that this Bitcoin is now owned to Golem. It's not mine anymore. But I get my cash. Cash is not recorded there. Cash is mine <laughs> in the real world, but this is in the in the crypto world. Another 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 way is actually do it to mining. Lah. But what I say is do the proof of work. You help them to verify this transaction is okay, it's good, it's recorded, it's is it's legit, it's good. Then you awarded. Bitcoin, yeah. So that's basically how the Bitcoin works, lah. So um, um, now I get to my opinions of crypto. I'll say um, crypto is very interesting stuff. When I get into this crypto stuff, I feel like it is very revolutionizing. It is changing the financial system. It making things decentralized. You can control your own money without like interruption from the third party financial institution. And you can actually feel the power of people. Feel the power of people in cryptocurrency world because like you are um everyone contributes not like the bank contribute the most and they actually gain their own advantage la. and we, we also see that there are a lot of problems with the decentralized uh with the centralized financial system currently and also do you know that um when like country face like the financial difficulties right um they what they will do is they print money out of thin and print more and more money that's why our currency drops are so um, you can see that our money currency values are actually depend on our banks and our country. It's not depends on ourselves. We can't control the money value. People can't control the money value. They can't, the country decides itself. But in cryptocurrency, um, because like, um, for example, Bitcoin, right, they have limitation. For example, one year, they probably give you 10, uh, they only publish 100 Bitcoins. So, so the, the variety, the, the, the number of Bitcoins in the, crypto, in the cryptocurrency world is always constant. It's not like print, print cash, print Malaysia and get out of thin air, right? For example, come now in the whole Malaysia, we have 10 million Malaysian get. Now we have not enough money, we print 10 more million, that become 20 million. So our currency actually drops. 
but in in cryptocurrency they actually have a consistent number of uh, currency uh, uh, of money actually distribute uh, yearly or monthly or something so you can actually control the money yourself lah. and so there are a lot of things to explore in the crypto and blockchain world lah. there are a lot of, like smart contracts DeFi, decentralized finance um, and nft to learn mining i think do not, don't need to learn lah. if you want to mine mine bitcoin is impossible right? you know, my bitcoin you need to buy like legit uh, gpu and stuff to actually mine the bitcoin because the computing power requires is very is very very um the computing power is very very neat because it's very very high and also um yeah if you if you want to mine yeah you just have tutorial lah. you just download software then you just mine only yeah but when you mine right wow, your 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 gp was your gp was <laughs> your computer power was, you were just spinning ah yeah and so there are a lot of like fake websites of vpn right they give you like a vpn free vpn but what they do is they use your computing power to perform um Mining lah, this a lot of stuff they usually do. Like so when download apps, you need to keep, you need to <laughs> beware lah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, there are a lot more to explore in the crypto and blockchain world, like smart contracts, which is very interesting. If there are a chance, I'll talk about it next time. Um, DeFi, decentralized finance, yeah, the interesting stuff there, and M NFT. Do you guys heard of NFT? Basically, they sell, they sell the artworks. <laughs> basically, like one GIF, they sell it for. <laughs> 300 300k us dollar yeah so yeah that's all for tonight um probably you guys have any questions you can drop um drop drop it there is it worth to play crypto uh, quite risky yeah it's, it's risky but i would say that um you don't for my opinion i uh, don't don't take my opinion i uh, just my opinion don't 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 say that i feel it better but for my own opinion i feel like you're putting one percent of uh, a little bit of your money in there you can explore stuff and mm -hmm. Is it is volatile because it's risky because it's volatile. Today it dropped twenty percent. Tomorrow it can he can he can go up fifty percent. This is really true. really true. It's quite risky. But I say don't put your whole all your money in cryptocurrency. It's too volatile. Probably like one percent of your total uh, total net worth or one percent of total on on money in your hand. They really put in there like losing this money won't bring you a lot of problems. But and, but um, you put it in your bank, you will just you will just like basically degrade uh, the money will basically um, the money will just drops the money value will just drops uh, because as time goes, your money you need to fight uh, fight towards uh, inflation. But bitcoins can fight towards inflation things, which are quite interesting. You can read it there too. Yeah, any guys, if you have any problem, you can drop in the chat lah. But I think I need to pass to my friend lah because I actually over time already. <laughs> You guys have any question you guys can drop at the check uh comment i will actually reply you through the new through the comment section uh. i think i'll pass the stage uh to my friend uh lucky lucky are you there yeah yeah you can hear my voice yeah i can hear you yeah so, so lucky like sure. uh, yeah lucky will be sharing about how uh, the journey she making her first um instagram filter how she make uh, her first instagram filter and how you can make your own life basically yeah and if you guys uh, want to know more about if you guys feel like um, you, you want to listen to more topic about this this stuff, right? Yeah, you, know, you guys want to learn more topic about this stuff. Um, you guys can comment there and sh um, share your opinions. And if you guys, um, you guys can basically just um, drop your opinions and yeah, discuss there. It's the kind of session you chat with other, you can learn more and more. Yeah. Now I will leave the stage um, to Loki to discuss about how she built um her uh, how, how can you build your own instagram filter for you for you um is the stage for you Loki. thank you kim can you guys see my screen yeah i can see your screen but it's not like full screen uh, it's is not full screen no. Uh, it's yeah. good now, eh? Right? I think it, it go back smaller now. Need I think to... I can't do the full screen. Then why just like this? Uh? Yeah, it's just like this. Uh. Okay. Okay. So, hi guys. I'm Loki. Um, year three software engineering student. So, before I start my topic, I want to ask you guys some question. So, do you guys have tried to use this filter before? Or other filter that are available on Instagram or Facebook? Yeah, for girls we like this filter, right? <laughs> so do you guys know that we actually can build uh, this filter by our own? So 
So actually we can build this. So yeah, actually we can build this filter by our own. So, but today I'm not gonna uh, teach how to build a so advanced filter like this. Uh. I will just uh, share how, about how to build a filter that has some sticker on your face. Just like that only. And before we start to build, so what tools do we need? First of all, we need to have, need to install this Spark AR tools. Actually, this tools is developed by Facebook for users to create their own AR effect without any coding stuff because it already provides a very comprehensive user interface. So you can download this from their official website. After you download this, then they will guide you to manage your, to link to your Facebook or Instagram account. So you come like this, so you can manage your effect later. So then before we build a filter, we need to design some texture like this, right? So actually people will usually use this Photoshop or AI to build the, to design the texture. But today I will share how to use this uh, piece art, a mobile application that available on Play Store or App Store. So it's more convenient for beginner like us. Uh. Since I don't want to keep change my device, so I already pre-recorded a video to show how to use the piece art mobile apps. So can see the screen, right? Can you guys see a video? Yeah, we can see. We can see uh, the video yeah. screen. So we need to start the Peace Art mobile apps and create a new file. Then we need to choose a transparent background since every image that you import in the Spark AR Studio must be PNG file. So that's why we need a transparent file. Then we need to import an image. This image called Face Mesh Asset. So why we need this? Because this it will act as a guideline that for us to ensure that our design will put on the right position on the user face. So this also can uh that well, this asset can download from the Spark AR Studio website also. It will provide a package for all these asset. Then for example now I want to add a sticker of uh, like smiley face that I search for smiley face and I'll add this on this face asset, I will put this on both sides for the cheek, then adjust the size and position. So then I also want to add one more sticker called brush on the nose. So I search for brush. Yeah, then I put it on the right side, adjust it. So I adjust everything, then I will, I can delete this face asset image. So now we can Download this image for later. We'll import import this to the Spark AR Studio. So before I start to talk into the Spark AR Studio, this uh, the this, uh, basic framework that we need to make later in the Spark AR. First of all, we need to have a face tracker object, then face mesh material and texture. Just now we are building the texture for the PR piece art mobile apps. So now we can start. To launch our Spark AR Studio. So from here you can see that uh, Spark AR Studio have provided many templates like color filter, face map, mask, makeup. But today uh, we just start from the brand project first. So you can see now the guys keep moving his head. So what is this for? Actually, it is a preview window. So when we start making our project, here we will live update the effect on this user face. Spark AR also provide many models from different gender to different skin tones. You also can use your own face by clicking on this, open your webcam. So now I want to choose this model. Then, first of all, we need to import the texture that we created just now. This is the smiley face that we created at the Spark Peace Park mobile apps. Then according to this framework, right, we need to uh, start to build a face tracker first. So from here, click on add object and search for face tracker. 
actually face tracker is an object that can help you to tra track your user uh, position and orientation. So insert it. Under this face tracker, we need to add one more face mesh object. So face mesh, face mesh object is a 3D model that will respond to the facial expression that tracked by the face tracker. I think I can rename this face tracker as Bali. And under this face mesh, we need to create a new material for on the right side. Click on it has a material, then we need to we can rename this material as face mesh. So under this material, we need to import the texture that we created just now, the smiley face. So now you can see a sticker is stick on the user face now. Yeah, we also need to change the shadow type to flat. This flat mean it will not uh, respond to any lighting. So it's good for building the 2D models like this. So actually, we are done now. If we just want to build a simple effect like this. But people always want wish that uh, their face will look smooth, don't have any pimples. So Spark AI also have this feature. So under this face trigger, we also need to add one more face mesh. Face mesh. And we redeem this as And under this retouching face mesh, we also need to create a new material. Let's click on create new material and rename this material as Then you can see a face mesh is on, is on the user face. Now we want to change the shadow type to retouching. So now you can see a, there's an option called skin smoothing. So now you can adjust this to smooth your user face. Like I want to put 100%. Then, so some we also want to make our eyes look bigger, our nose look taller, and our face look smaller. So how to do this? Then we need to add a face mesh again under the face tracker. Then we rename this as And in, under this face distortion, we need to, you see, you can see a deformation here, then you click on it. So now you need to import a package called face distortion package. This, this package also can found on the Spark, Spark AR Studio website. So now, you can see there's appear many options that we can change now. Like I want to make our eyes look bigger 100%. <laughs> then I also want to make our nose look taller, like just this. You can, you guys can try other things too, like from something like this. Okay. Then you just make this back to normal first. So now I want to try this effect on our device. It also can be done on this by AR Studio. I click on this, test on device. Then you can choose send to your Instagram apps or Facebook apps that you link just now. You click on send, then they will send you a notification. So you can try it out on your Instagram apps. So after I want, I decide want to publish this in, uh, filter on my Instagram. So I can choose on file, upload and export. So I can choose this, publish a new effect, upload. Then after this, the Spark AR Studio will want you to fill up the information for their review. So after you submit this, all this information, submit, fill up this all information, then you can click on submit then the Spark AR team will approach your effect, then now your effect can be available on all Instagram or Facebook that can use by every people there. Yeah. 
actually that's all for me today. Thank you. If you guys have any question, you can ask me now. Yeah, if you guys have any question, you can drop it there. Probably at the same time, Loki, do you want to share any um, filters that you did before? Because I said saw that you have a few filters there. Um, I think, don't know, can show it here or not. Yeah, probably you have a look and probably you can tell us about how, what it is, uh, how is the effect or something. At the same time, you guys can actually leave your... It's <laughs> 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 great, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so you guys can actually create your own filters. So you guys, right, after this workshop, after this sharing session, can go to download Spark AR to create your own filters as well. Uh, if you want to make your face slim, uh, you can control it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> adventure time. Oh, so you have like three, three filters here. Oh, you have 77.8K opens. That's a lot. Mm. And 12.2 captures. What? So that this effect cannot have money like youtube <laughs> yeah yeah they, they can't monetize uh, but uh, probably like a, a hobbies project and it's a it's like a satisfaction you'll say yeah it's like a satisfaction the people using your stuff have some fun give some positive vibes to others <laughs> yeah yeah any any filters okay uh, you want to the filter get your face more bl bl more bloated? <laughs> yeah, also can. You want to make your face slim? Also can. Yeah. Probably you guys can also comment on which filter do you like the most. <laughs> okay, comment which filter do you like the most? What filter? Uh, I didn't use, but I, I I get to know that the slim face filter that you show on your slides is the one of the most famous one nowadays. All girls use it. To take selfies, <laughs> to take Insta, it's a selfie. Yeah. That one really nice, huh? That is very nice. You get your face in very shape. And more like. <laughs> that one is very famous. You guys have any questions? You can drop, drop it here. Yeah. Any questions? So you guys can really try it out to create your own, <laughs> own um yeah own filter Insta filters here as well. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, you can drop here regarding uh, the Lockheed's topic about um, cryptocurrency, uh, the, the cryptocurrency, but about the um, uh, Instagram filter stuff, or you also can ask about any crypto stuff, and I'll answer. I'll try to answer you um, by nine. Yeah, we're ending session at nine. Now we have like Q and A or chit chat session. Yeah, if you guys want to turn your mind to like chit chat a little bit, talk about. Your opinion or something and you want to share a little bit about some stuff you can tell your mic as well or you can just write in the comment we will end at the same time at nine and now it's like uh we'll say a conversation session something like this yeah really thank you um thank you lam really thank you you for enjoying this session yeah yeah is there a computer Spark AR. I think um, one of our friends actually sent the Spark AR thing there, so you can actually um, explore that as well. Yeah, if not, yeah. any questions, guys? Yeah, anyone, any inputs from you guys and stuff? Yeah. Did you guys want to try to create your own Insta filter now? You guys can comment the section there. Oh, you guys want to become oh. a share speaker for next session? Also, yeah, if, yeah. If you guys also want to share something, um, regarding tech or something, right? You can just um give us a ping us, ping us up, and yeah, we can schedule a a, a share session with you guys as well. Really, really, really wish to like um have this environment in the university to let students to speak up, to share their stuff because like um university is a time that we can share something. Um, without any consideration to your friends, to your peeps, bring some vibes and bring some knowledge, bring some uh, uh, empower others and let others learn some new stuff together. Yeah. Um, and we feel like this is a, a more healthy environment for people to learn and build together. Yeah. If you guys are interested in um, in being a speaker, you can drop us a call, drop us a message. Lah. Yeah. Or um, I think we have a form. Uh, probably, uh, Wei Jing, can you send the form link at the comments uh, at the comment section? 
if uh, yeah, we do, yeah, we do have it here. You can take this screenshot. If you have any ideas, you can sign up as a speaker now. Yeah, this is a form here. Any ideas regarding um, making filter, web style, something like that? Yeah. Okay, uh, we have a question for you, Loki. Uh, may I know how to how to do multiple filters and combine it into one? Like how others allow us to change the to change the change color? That one need to uh, add some page page that have some logic inside. That one are more advanced. I also I forget already how to fill in. Yeah, probably are they like to show them? Yeah. Wait, ah, uh, fine. Yeah, sure. Um, probably at the same time that we're preparing, um, I can. This is a, this is a question from Golem. Can I ask the all topic stuff where your session related to PHP in future just web development? So, I want to make a very fine, you know, done with a HTML, but we've been generation involved with the really good. Oh, okay. So, you are doing well development stuff. Yeah, sure. Interesting. Um, we do plan to have like a web bootcamp on next month, but um, yeah, we are working on that, but um, Backend stuff are usually like, yeah, usually it's more easier to have a, a bootcamp, uh, a online bootcamp using like um, doing like front end stuff. But most probably our target would be um, uh, a front end stuff. But PHP in the future, yeah, I, I personally didn't use PHP. I use Node.js. I, I do I do backend stuff Node.js. Or um, if if you want to, um, uh, it could be JS as well. Because like in the page, I'm done with the HTML and CSS, and I included a registration form, but I can't oh. really make the registration form work without the backend stuff. Yeah, sure, interesting. Okay, so um, there are some interesting for things for you to do. You can choose some, um, uh, some, some stuff like Firebase or Superhand. I like Superhands, but like, what is the name right here? Like Firebase, which is like abstractions of backend. They can help you to do like sign up, sign in stuff very easily. You can have a look Firebase, which I usually do to like uh, use Firebase to do like um, web stuff for login, signups, and simple backend stuff. Yeah, for usually login and sign up. If you want to like, um, you want to get your sites to deliver deliver um, easily, e easier without handling like security stuff, um, port stuff, security, um, authentication, and all kind of stuff. Right, you can actually get in touch with Firebase. I would say. Firebase is my favorite. Yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite, I like pretty, pretty like Firebase. And yeah, that's, that's a really interesting thing. PHP is also okay. Um, but in HTML, CSS, you can you actually use PHP or Ruby also, on Rails also can. But PHP, uh, you can actually get learn, learn it through YouTube, like just like PHP um, sign up stuff. Yeah, but it's like I needed the page, I needed to finish the page really fast. But like I never really learned PHP before. So I was confused a bit about it. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, I think I think if you really want to um, get it really fast, right? Um, yeah, we, we do. We will take this as our consideration to on our future in our future workshop and stuff. But probably we, we can't uh, prepare it at a short time because um, preparing a workshop stuff, right? Uh, we do need a preparation time to make sure that everyone can benefit from it. But I will, what, what I would encourage you to do is really um, because we want to make it for our friends probably the fastest way is to make some self-learning stuff. Yeah, you need to really work. Uh, for Kohu question, right? So when we want to change, keep change the filter, then we need to set up some logic at this patch editor here, like this. Yep. I think you need to share your screen. Uh, can you see my screen? I will share. Oh. Sorry, I just now I just now went offline for a while because my internet connection is connected. Sorry. Yeah, we can see your screen now. Yeah. So if you want to do like change the filter, then you need to add some logic here at this patch editor. So that the change filter one can I think can found on many YouTube video or Spark AR Studio website. They also teach you how to build this logic. Changing the mm. So basically, you can create this um, whole filter without any code, right? Basically, you yeah. can do it drag and drop, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so basically, yeah, you can just explore it. I think there are a lot of 
tutorials online as well. Um, you can customize it based on your needs. Yeah, it will be okay since we don't need actually any codes or technical, very very technical stuff to actually work on this. Yeah, really wish to answer your question probably Hugh Lam. Yeah. Yeah. Any anyone here you have any questions again? Uh, we can drop us a comment. Um, if not, probably we can end the session in a while. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I saw any some stuff here with all. Uh, yeah, thanks for the answer, but I didn't want to learn PHP. I want to learn if any solutions take position Firebase. Yeah, Firebase will be a fast solution uh, if you want to build it fast. Yeah, but I know, yeah, it should be. Yeah, you can have a look at that. And then you can search for Google and stuff there. But yeah, the fast solution will be Firebase, I would say. Yeah, any any question from you guys? Any stuff from you guys? Yeah. If not, um, I think probably we can end the session today. Uh, really, thank you, Loki, for preparing the session today. And I wish you guys get to learn how to create your own filter. And you probably you guys can actually create your own filter, right? If you create your own filter, you can tag us XMUN. Um, probably you can tag us on Instagram that you create your own filter. Yeah then we will actually have the publicize about. So we really wish that um, some content we produce can actually bring some help for you guys and learn some new stuff. Since you guys spend your time in this Friday evening to actually come to join this talk and learn uh, and listen to some sharing yeah. session. Yeah, and also if you guys interested in cryptocurrency, <laughs> yeah, you guys can, yeah, you guys can talk in the group as well. Yeah, cryptocurrency interesting, blockchain interesting. This recently what I, I really like it recently, yeah, yeah. Doge, Doge coin to the moon, okay? <laughs> Joking. Yeah, so really thanks again for joining. See you guys next time. Um, I think two weeks later, in, in a while, we have another event coming soon. Um, yeah, so see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, thank you, Loki. Bye, guys.